All right, collectors, today on the channel, we're going to take a look at Ralph Nunchuk Baducci from the G.I. Joe Classified series from Hasbro. Um, I don't remember this character as a kid. I just uh, started getting, I just saw that people were getting this figure in. I know some people got it from overseas, like in August, September sometime. <laughs> But uh, I didn't want to pay the, you know, overseas price for these guys. You know, usually it's about, you know, $30 in shipping for a $25 figure. So it ended up costing you $70 for one figure. So I bowed out of that. Uh, but anyways, now they're shipping. I just got mine a couple days ago. So and we haven't done a review in a while. So I figured let's do a review and let's start off with this guy. Um, first impressions of him. Uh, I was kind of a little bit upset with him because when I took him out of the box, one of his knee joints was locked up. Um, and I ended up popping off one of that, that boot joint back there, that boot cut. However, I know nothing's perfect, but doggone it, I keep fixing these things right out of the box. Um, put some heat on it, still wasn't enough. I had to take some oil, uh, some shock oil, uh, and then work it into the the knee cut here. You can still see there's some oil there on this one and that one. And put the oil on it, get some heat on it with a heat gun, have the oil thin out and penetrate that. And then finally uh, get into that uh, uh, joint there and that fixed it completely. No more problems with that joint. So anyways, you may have that or not. I also had to add some oil to his midsection. It just felt really tight but now it's much better. So be warned, that's what happened to mine. Nothing broke, but there were some, you know, I wouldn't even call them QC issues, right? I, maybe it's engineering, I don't know. Maybe some people like them tighter than others, but I'd like some tension there for sure, but I don't want it to where I have to put all my 200 pounds on it to move. Uh, that's a bit ridiculous. So anyways, uh, back to the figure. Uh, apparently, he was part of Ninja Force. He was trained by Storm Shadow uh, to fight Cobra. There we go. Storm Shadow becomes good, I guess, and fights Cobra. To me, my Storm Shadow was always a bad guy, but a, an honorable bad guy. <laughs> so, anyways, um, I know there's some other stories that came out there, and I'm kind of catching up on those right now. So, hey, don't, don't hold it against me now. I, you know, almost, Storm Shadow is almost like what they did to Boba Fett, right? Boba Fett was a bad guy, but then everybody liked him so much that they're like, you know what? We got to turn him into a good guy. <laughs> Too many people like him. We can't have people liking evil. So anyways, interesting part is when I got this figure, he doesn't have any any uh, weapons. Well, he has weapons. He doesn't have any guns. There's no guns here. It's all like ninja stuff. Well, of course, you ninja force. So... Uh, ninja stuff. He's a subset underneath of G.I. Joe. Um, anyways, yeah, uh, I don't remember this guy because apparently he came out in 92 and I had joined up. <laughs> I had joined up with Uncle Sam right, right around that time and uh, I was gone. Uh, I, I joined up right out of high school, so um, I was I was nowhere near nowhere near this action <laughs> when it came out <laughs> but anyways uh, uh it's gi joe i'm willing to give it a shot and take a look at it so let's get into it here's the box he's standing up there on top of a cityscape um you know doing his ninja stuff looking cool uh classified nunchuck there's a little close-up shot of his like you know concept art and then a digital rendering there i like it looks nice you know Ninjas, ninjas got a ninjas. And let's see what he has up here. Number 80 in the line. Yeah, it looks like, seems like we've been waiting forever for this guy to come out. I wonder what it was. Was it QC issues? Was it the wrong factory? Was it just, they had to resend everything back to the factory and redo it? I don't know. Uh, six foot one, so he's on the, you know, a smaller size and we'll get a couple of figures and compare and contrast. Um, kind of close-ups there of his face and his weapons, the side uh, pauldrons that he has there. And another close-up art, uh, concept art there. So anyways, am I keeping this box? No, I already got another box. So getting to the figure at hand, um, when I, like I said, I had a little, I had a few problems with him initially trying to get him started. 
because uh, he was really tight. He's not that tight anymore. Still a little tight around his waist, but not, not too bad. I can feel it giving. So you can see some oil there as well. I had to put some oil in there because he was, he was real, real tight. Uh, let's take off all these accessories. He's got a couple of nunchucks. And we'll take a closer look at the accessories in a little bit. He's got a couple of nunchucks back here. Of course, his name is Nunchuck. So, of course, he's going to have some nunchucks. So, he's got a couple of sets of nunchucks back there. Um, he's got some cool swords. We'll put all this to the side. I really love these claws. You can use them for anything, really. So, uh, if this guy ever makes it to Ross, <laughs> I'll be buying extras. So it, it, anybody, oh man, anybody feel like it's the, you know, the, it's gone from Ross FOMO to Ross anxiety now. Now I have to visit Ross three, four times a day just in case I miss something. I don't know. I'm not really doing that. I'm not going three, four times. I go in the morning uh, and then I, if I happen to feel like it on the way back from work, I'll stop at one or two maybe. But anyways, um, back to this figure here he is aesthetically what does he look like uh i'm i'm a little confused as to why he's wearing green ninjas are usually what i mean but then again what, what do i know about ninjas usually, but ninjas usually wear black right because they're stealthy they want to be stealthy i think storm shadow is the only ninja that i accept wearing white because he's super super stealthy doesn't matter what color he wears he's super ninja storm shadow <laughs> So anyways, he's wearing green. Maybe he's in the jungle. Maybe he's a jungle ninja. But of course, the picture on the box art had him in the city. Uh, maybe he's standing in front of a Starbucks sign. He can't tell what he... I don't know. <laughs> Be facetious. Uh, oh, that's a big word. I sound uppity with that word. Anyways. Anyways. Um, yeah. Let's take a look at him close up. Let's see. Yeah, looks good. Nice work there. I like and I don't like this. And we'll get into why in a minute. Um, he's got some, you know, nice detail there. Not a lot of color, though. Or not a lot of, like, silver spots or, you know, not a lot of variations there. No no uh, ink washes or anything like that. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's basically two colors, right? It's like gray and then uh green <laughs> okay okay i mean that's fine uh you know you don't want a ninja to be all colorful and stuff uh that, that would defeat the purpose of being trying to be stealthy right so um yeah i'm okay with this uh what do i give him aesthetically uh just looking at him like this, he's not bad but he's nothing to write home about i said give him cast okay, a great here's go here's goes the grading I grade my figures from one to five. Uh, one is trash, throw it in the dump. Uh, two is give it to Goodwill, somebody will love it. Uh, three is like, meh, it's all right. Leave it or take it, either way is fine. Four, four and a half, solid figure. Four and a half to five, great figure. 5.1, when you turn it up to 11 like Spinal Tap, that's a must have. On an appearance scale, this one here, I'm gonna give it a four. It's a solid look. I wish it had a little bit more tinges of maybe some washes and maybe a spot or here or there of uh, silver, something to make it look like, you know, the, the metal's been beat up a little bit, but for the most part, it's a four. It's not bad. Not bad looking figure. I like the little waves he's got here, but probably should be blowing this way because it looks like that wind is blowing that way. Oh, popped right off. Put it back in there. Or did it just break? That would be bad. Right on camera. Just. All right. Um, oh, what do I think about this one as far as the Scalpy McScalperson score? <laughs> and I'll put a guide to it right here. What we're going to have for the Scalpy score. I'm going to say this guy. I'm going to say he's about a three. I mean, he's not going to be not wanted, but he's definitely not going to be. Um, there's a possibility he'll end up at Ollie's. I'm going to say that. So I don't think this is a good, uh, you know, score for Scalpy McScalperson. <laughs> so, uh, and, that, and now again, why am I adding that little bit into the videos? It's because YouTube, um, YouTube 
wants to mark everything for kids, uh, but unless there's a portion of it that's not for kids and what, you know, uh, and, you know, investing in toys is not something that kids would think about. They'd be like, what? No, just give me the figure. So I think this one's about on par with about a Dusty, you know, maybe a shipwreck, you know, um, not, not reviled, uh, but not super, you know, wanted. Uh, it's right there with about a Dusty, I think, or, a, or maybe a Stalker. I like Stalker, but everybody seems to, he, he seems to be everywhere. I like Dusty, but he seems to be everywhere. So yeah, I think he's, he'll, he'll sit right there now. Um, I, I, we'll get into, if he does end up being like Dusty, I think he's going to be coveted maybe at the Ross slash Ollie's level. People are really going to look for him there because he, he might be a solid troop builder. Might be. All right, let's take a look at the articulation. Right off the bat, this is, you know, this is not good. You know, I like the way it looks, how they detailed that out, but it really hinders his head movement. It really, I mean, it really renders it. So this is doo-doo. Um, like, I, I wish they would have made this like soft cloth or something. Um, and, you know, great, great for this, but it's, no, I don't like that. So uh, if anything, I would just probably, you know, maybe replace, does this come off? No, it doesn't come off. I'd maybe replace this with a regular I mean, I've got a ton of those Action Force heads. I'll probably put a regular uh, black Action Force head, you know, from him on here. Uh, or just grab another ninja head somewhere for, for, for this. Uh, I don't, you know, if they would have made this out of, of uh, just regular, you know, uh, cloth. Jeez, what's wrong with me? Cloth would have been fine. Uh, maybe this you could leave out of plastic because it, it gets out of your way. But this needs to have been clawed, so that's poo-poo. Uh, the second part of this, look at this. It's all in your way. This is as much as you can do without really doing a lot. This is it. See that? And I'm not going to lie to you, folks. I'm going to tell you what, you know, this articul... If it's an action figure, it has to action. It has to articulate. I, I don't care if he's an integral part of whatever show or whatever thing you've got. If it, he's a ninja, he's supposed to move around like Spider-Man. This is it. That can't even do a T-pose. Look, look at that. Look at that. Now, I wonder if this comes off. I don't know if this comes off or not. I have to just judge it by what's presented to me. Is it hard to move up there? No. Can I force it? You know what you could do? You could do it this way. And that kind of forces that out of the way. And then you could get it to kind of go to the side there. So you could do it that way for his, you know, T-pose. But, you know, no, that's not really a T-pose, is it? That's that's different. He can't really lift his arms up because of that pauldron gets completely in the way. Um, he does move up a little bit. He's got a butterfly joint there. Double jointed elbows. And he does have, uh, a, a, what is it, a dice roll hand right here? Yeah, dice roll on this and a dice roll on this one as well. So... Uh, it's unfortunate. I don't know if I can take these off. Let's see. You cannot take these off. These do not. These are almost glued into or a part of the mold. And then they're glued on to top. This portion is glued on top of it. So if you take this off, it's going to look a mess inside of here. So, I mean, that's horrible. That's horrible. Um, what? Did, why didn't they just put them on here so I could take them off? That's horrible. Ugh. Not good. Uh, all right. Uh, let's look at the uh, crunch, crunchification. Let's see. He can go up this far. Of course, G.I. Joe's always crunch really good and go back really good. So that's really nice. Uh, do, it was a little bit tough right there to move it, but now he can move pretty well there. Drop down hips. Uh, he can kick up that far really good. Kick back that far. He does have a cut at the waist. I mean, a cut at the... Um, thigh, double jointed, pinless <clears throat> knees, cut at the boot, and ankle pivot, go down that far, come up, that's really good though, come up that far, so that's really nice there, but boy, ah, with this T-pose is junk, look at this, this T-pose is doo-doo, doo-doo, it's really unfortunate too. Maybe I can give these claws to somebody else, or maybe I can swip out, swatch, switch out these hands or arms. That's, they should have made these either way more. They should have made these out of the same crap they make their guns out of. 
it's, it's, so they could just be as pliable and as gummy as their doggone guns and then get out of your way. So, I mean, it looks, it looks like a nice figure. <clears throat> uh, so there's that. It's a four articulation wise. It, it's like a three and a half, uh, you know, and, and that's because, you know, it's a really meh articulation. You can't do a T-pose. That's huge, huge points off. And his head is stuck in specific patterns. You can't move. So that's, that's huge there. Uh, I did have a little bit of trouble with his knees and stuff, but I fixed that. So, yeah, I mean, is it horrible? No. Is it serviceable? Yes. But you, you, you screwed up on that. That's that's no good, Hasbro. Uh, that's doo doo. Um, let's see. Let's see. Is it? Let's look at his accessories real quick. Um, comes with a knife. Here's his knife. Let's see. To the side there. He comes with his knife there. Kind of neat. Put it right in there. there you go. He comes with these two swords. These two swords look actually pretty cool. So there's that. Very nice. What's that? The hilt. What is that? Nothing. Can't tell. What is that? It's like an animal or something. What is that? Can't tell. Anyways, there it is. Very cool. And then you have these uh, claws. Claws are very nice. I dig them. Really like them. Very nice. You can use them all kinds of figures. And then, of course, you have the nunchucks. Here they are. Nunchucks. So what do I give this figure? Ultimately, I give this figure with the combined score of his meh articulation and okay, you know, solid look. Uh, he's going to end up like at a 3.7, you know, leave, you know, take it or leave it. Uh, he'll probably be highly uh, uh, worth your while uh, at Ollie's or, you know, maybe Ross. Uh, but at retail, like I said, I bought this one to take out and mess around with, and then I'm going to put one, uh, unopened on the shelf, uh, just because I like to be a completist on the GI Joe line. But I mean, the only reason I'd pick them up is for all these weapons. And I, you know, the, the next one I'd pick up to see what I could do with this. Um, these pauldrons, they just, they're just junk. Those pauldrons are junk. Make them out of the same crap you make your guns has, bro. Maybe that way they'll get out of the way. Anyways, guys. Thanks for joining me today. Um, that's what I've got with this guy. We're going to do a review very soon of the Coco Commander. Let's see how he goes. I'm excited about that. It almost feels like uh, I'm committing a, a criminal offense by opening it, but that's okay. He's going to be riding high on his his tank. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks so much for engaging. Um, don't forget, Daniel uh you you won the prize for the ross viper three pack uh, i'm gonna put your name right here you won go contact me contact me <laughs> you have 48 hours and almost 24 of it are gone my friend if daniel doesn't contact me guys i'm gonna go back and pick another winner he's had 20, he has 48 hours i hope he read the details i really want to give it to him but if he doesn't follow the rules i can't give it to him and then we'll have to pick another winner. And then we'll just go down the line until we pick somebody who's, who's responsive. So uh, that's why you should probably put your, you know, notifications on so you can see who wins or whatever. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every one of you guys uh, jumping in the comment section, you know, giving me ideas, giving me feedback. Uh, love interacting. And, and as much as I can, I, I, I usually read everybody's comments. So... Again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, and as long as you guys keep watching, I'll keep rolling these out.